the term bond vigilante was penned in 1980 by Ed Yardini. And since 1980, kind of like Samuel Beckett's Waiting on Godot, we're still waiting for the bond vigilantes to arrive. You're listening to The Real Investment Show. So back in the uh, 1800s, out in the Wild West, when uh, lawlessness got out of hand, in some cases, town folk would uh, solve the problem. And these were called vigilantes. And they would go out and they would, you know, round up the, the lawbreakers, hang them, you know, whatever. And, you know, vigilantism works, but it's not legal. And, of course, the sheriff, but, you know, back in the 1800s, a lot of times, you know, you've seen the movies. A lot of times the sheriff was corrupt because he was in with the, the land baron. And he was getting paid off by the land baron, you know, to, to uh, drive off the sheep farmers in exchange to, you know, build more cattle ranch. You know, whatever it was. You, you've seen the movies. But, the myth, the, you know, this myth of vigilantism um, is fine. And, and, and this is particularly relating to the bond market. And there's been a lot of conversations of late. I've got a lot of emails from people saying, well, so-and-so said the bond vigilantes are coming back and they're not going to want to buy the debt. You know, bond buyers won't want to buy the debt anymore because of, you know, the amount of the deficit, the amount of debt we have issued, et cetera. And, it, and it's certainly a great headline, right? It's a, it's a great it's a great story. It sounds you know just brings up all of these images of the Wild West and you know these these bond traders with mask on and they're you know they're going to raid the bond market and 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 uh, refuse to buy bonds, et cetera. And so interest rates are going to have to go up, and, and it's a great story. And 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 uh, the problem is is that the term bond vigilante was penned in 1980 by Ed Yardini. And since 1980, kind of like Samuel Beckett's Waiting on Godot, we're still waiting for the bond vigilantes to arrive. But, you know, everybody keeps coming out every year going, well, this is the year the bond vigilantes are going to come, and yet they don't. And there's a big reason for that which I'll tell you about. And this article is on the website right now. I'm just going to I'm going to go through a couple of the charts from the article. But if you want to read the whole article, it's on the website now, realinvestmentadvice.com. It's called Bond Vigilantes and the Waiting of Godot. So first of all, if we take a look at 10-year interest rates as a function and look at the year-over-year rate of change of the, of the bond market, what we know is that this is the biggest annual rate of change in history. Now, this is not just the increase in yield. If you go back and look at the late 1970s, the, the actual increase in the yield was much greater than it is today, but it was from much higher levels. So when you go from a z- basically a zero interest rate to 4%, it's a massive increase in the year-over-year rate of change. So, you know, The important thing, though, is to realize that throughout history, every time you've had these large year-over-year rates of change, they don't last. And the reason is, is because you wind up with either a financial crisis, a recession, a bear market in stocks, or a combination of all three. And that's a function of interest rates and the impact on the economy and the leverage, right? And we have more leverage today than we've ever had in history. Back in 1980, when um, Ed Yardini coined the term bond vigilantes, debt to household equity, uh, net worth was about 60%. Today, it's 150. So the, the change, the rate of change of interest rates, not just on, on household debt, but corporate debt, government debt, is important, right? It's huge. So we can't sustain higher rates indefinitely because of the impact of higher rates on all the debt. Now, going back to 1787, we've had basically a year and a half now of of negative bond market returns. 
But there has never been a period of time, even in the 60s and 70s, where interest rates were going up because of the oil embargo, the default on the debt, you know, everything else. This happened by the 60s, You never had three years in a row of negative returns. Now, if we have a negative return on bonds this year, year's not over yet, but right now we've got a negative return. This would be the first time in history you have three years of row uh, in a row with negative returns on bonds, going back to 1787. So despite the Great Depression, despite the, you know, the oil embargoes and, and massive inflationary spikes, et cetera, you've never had three years in a row of negative bond market returns. Can't mean it doesn't mean it can't happen this year. Could. But what's the likelihood of a fourth or a fifth or a sixth? See, this is the problem with the thesis that, well, interest rates are going to go higher forever and, you know, you want to be all in stocks. Okay. But just something to think about. But back to this idea of bond vigilantism, you know, bond vigilantes are fine until the, the sheriff actually, you know, the good sheriff comes into town and arrests the, the vigilantes, right? Vigilantism is illegal, right? If you want to go out and lynch your neighbor because, you know, his dog pooped in your yard, you can do that, but you're probably going to wind up going to jail. So the sheriff in town is important. And we'll talk about him in a second. But if we look back at over history also, too, just talking about changes in rates, when the Federal Reserve hikes rates aggressively like they have done now, it's always led to a crisis event, either in the stock market, a recession, or a, or a financial crisis, right? So, again, it's just a function of interest rate changes over time. And we've had a very large change in rates. Um, the, so it should be fairly obvious what probably happens next. But let's talk about the sheriff in town because that's the most important issue. The change today, and this began in 2008, and this is the key point about the whole bond vigilante market, right? So back in 1980, when Ed Yardini coined the term bond vigilante, it was the bond market traders, right? It was the guys running the bond market. It was the institutions. It was uh, the corporate bond traders. It was those guys, the guys on Wall Street. They ran the bond market. They were the buyers. They were the sellers. That was it. When the government wanted to sell treasury debt, they would sell it to the open market uh, through their through their uh, preferred dealers, and then those got sold off to retail investors. But that's not the way the bond market works anymore. In 2008, the central banks became the sheriff in town. When the bond market didn't want to own bonds because of the Lehman crisis, nobody was willing to trade with each other. The Federal Reserve stepped in and said, hey, we'll buy them. And it's not just the Federal Reserve. It's the Bank of China. It's the Bank of Japan. It's the ECB. It's the Swiss National Bank. So when times get tough in the bond market and when bond traders go, well, I don't really want to buy bonds right now, central bank steps up. What happened in March of this year when you had the regional bank crisis? Federal Reserve stepped in, started a bank term funding program, BTFB. P, bailed out the banks. And this is going to be the case going forward. This is, this is the new sheriff in town, and that's not going to change. And that, by in and of itself, leads to the issue that there can't be bond vigilantes anymore. And going forward, the more debt that we issue, that just simply means that the Federal Reserve is going to have to monetize more of, a, more of that debt that is, that is issued. Now, that's not printing money, by the way. That's an asset swap. And this was one of the, the misnomers of the emails I got over the weekend was, is, well, the Fed's going to have to print a lot more money. No, the Fed doesn't print money. They credit the reserve balances of the banks. It's a digital swap. And then in exchange, the bond transfers to the Federal Reserve. And then there's a closed loop between the Treasury and the Fed recycling interest payments. So this asset swap going forward, the Fed will have to monetize up to 30% of the total debt issuance going forward. According to the CBO, we'll, we're going to be um, running at about $135 trillion of debt <laughs> by 2050. The Fed's going to have to monetize at least 30% of that to keep interest rates suppressed. Now, if you don't believe, so, so you go, well, Lance, that, that, you know, right there, that's the problem. And that's why interest rates are going to have to go up eventually because there's just so much debt, so much deficits. Well, the problem with that idea is that we have an example 
to look at. All we have to do is look at the debt to GDP of Japan, which is currently running at about 220% of debt to GDP, and they're still here. Where are interest rates? Zero. Since 1995, their debt to GDP has been swelling, and interest rates continue to decline. Economic growth continues to deteriorate. They have rolling recessions. It's not a pretty sight for Japan. But they're still here, and interest rates are still near zero. If we look at the reason why that is the case, that is because the Bank of Japan is the sheriff in town for Japan. The Bank of Japan's balance sheet, they now own basically all of the ETF market, about 80% of the ETF market, the bond market, the stock market. They're just buying all the assets in order to keep interest rates suppressed and trying to keep some nascent rate of economic growth going in the economy. They are by themselves the sheriff in town for the bond market. So the point is simply this, is that at the end of the day, the, the thesis of the bond vigilantes returning and driving interest rates up to the moon is simply not the case because in an environment where all else was equal and we only had bond traders in the market, that is a likely possibility that that could happen. The bond vigilantes could control the market. But all else is not equal when the central banks can buy all the debt that they need to buy to keep interest rates suppressed. And they'll have to to keep the economy functioning. Get daily investment news you can use. Delivered at the speed of the internet at realinvestmentadvice.com.